this looks like work, but yes, it's good work. And finally, I can do something about my Brassavola orchids because I have not been successful in growing them with Lekka and self-watering. I have two different varieties. None of them seem to be working. We're going to be changing the setup and I'm going to show you something another finally as well. Thank you for joining me on this video. Thank you for clicking on it. Let's get to work. This is my Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. It's a little pocket rocket when it starts to grow a new growth, which it hasn't for an entire season. And it's quite disappointing because one of the fun parts about this orchid is the speed at which the new growths grow. You can measure them day by day, two centimeters, maybe three centimeters per day until they reach their mature size. And por fin, we have ourselves a new growth. Probably not that obvious, but I am pointing it out right here. Yes, I just said it was going to be a quick grower. It just takes a little while to come out of the gates and then it's just grow, 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 grow. So happy to see this. I would say that it took a rest, maybe, for an entire year. However, it bloomed continuously as it should, despite not having a new growth to work with. I don't want to get ahead of myself, and I'm sure it's not going to be visible here at this point in time, but I did see something else so minute, so tiny, that I'm probably doing wishful thinking. It is possible that one of the tiniest growths in the back is starting another lead which would be awesome because I always got two growths out of this orchid when she first arrived in my collection in 2018. Then the next year I had a single growth and a single growth. Then she skipped a year. So <laughs> here we are. At least we have one to work with. That just out of the gates because if we're going to say finally when it comes to a thumbnail, then tetragonum fits the bill. Right. Now onto my quick little theoretical explanation of my Brassavola hybrid here, Brassocatlia gyra kiku, and a Brassavola species. This is my Cordata. The gyra kiku to the left, something was in the rhizome. Couldn't quite determine if it was Fusarium. Either way, there was a problem and my big gyra kiku fell into four pieces, two of which are in rescue mode. They always feature in the rescue mode videos, somewhat progressing, very, very slowly, but progressing. That's all we can ask for. And my Kiku here, same thing, <laughs> progressing. It's taken quite some time. Now, I also say finally with this orchid because there is a new growth coming that looks marginally better than the one that's right here. And this piece, it's the first new growth in a very, very long time. Yes, there's two pieces in here, but it gives me hope that we're on the right track. You can see another tiny new growth down there where it's pushing new roots. When you look at the Cordata to the right, now this is a species, but Brassavola parents are extremely strong and dominant when it comes to the root behavior of the orchid if a Brassavola is an immediate parent. So with my Brassavola species, I opted for small Lekka, and you can see the comparison to my hybrid here with large lecker because observing brassavola roots has been something let's say of a mission of mine since my brassavola flagellaris is bare root mounted etc i can observe the behavior of the roots and it just so happens that i did a video on that the link i will put into the description because it explains to you the life cycle of a brassavola species root system what to look out for what to know also to know that you haven't made the mistake so check the description for that video. It's really, really interesting. Based on those observations, this is what I did with my Brassavolas. Considering the Brassavola parent is strong, I treated both of them like Brassavolas, respecting what the roots do in order for better cultivation. However, Brassavola warm to hot growers, Lekka self-watering, Lekka having evaporative cooling, etc. My temperatures in the winter dropping to an extreme that the pot could cool down too much which Brassavolas do not like, cold and wet. While you can overwinter a Brassavola in cooler temperatures than its tolerance, if the roots are wet, issues will arise very, very quickly. My Cordata looks a little bit like, <clears throat> yeah, matchsticks, <laughs> soldiers in a pot. 
still, it's growing a new growth. It lost a lot of leaves from the past winter. And quite frankly, I thought I had lost the orchid. Now, upon closer inspection, I was going to repot this orchid as well. But on closer inspection, we are not there yet because the new roots that grew on the previous growth, such as the habit of the cordata, that when a new growth pushes, the new roots come from the previous growth, they've already extended a little bit too much. So only one repot and setup change for today. The cordata will have to come at a later stage and I hope I have the grace to be able to do that before she completely collapses on me. But you can see in both cases, Lekka self-watering. Here I tried large Lekka to somewhat manipulate the Lekka during the winter, keep it a little bit on the drier side, if that makes sense, without the Lekka drying out completely. And here I took only small Lekka, thinking that it needs to be a little bit more insulated with more Lekka around the root system instead of going with a larger pot. That didn't work either. And for that reason, what I'm going to do now is move my gyrak kiku into medium-sized lava rock in a self-watering setup, whether I have viable roots in the pot or not. This is what we need to be looking out for. This is what we now need to nurture and make sure that these don't collapse on us. This one, we need to keep our fingers crossed and hopefully get another chance, another shot, and that will go into lava rock as well because lava rock does not have evaporative cooling, but in my extremely dry climate, lava rock will retain a lot of water, a lot of humidity, and that is what I'm after, and that is why most of my collection is in Lekka and self-watering, simply because of the microclimate. Every pot has the Lekka having a lot of humidity in it because of the reservoir, and I try to work with that. In this case, it didn't work out, but after two years, we are now ready to repot her because I also advocate do not repot until you see signs of improvement because it might even set the orchid back further than she already was. So with that being said, I'm going to clear my little table here. While I do that, would you give this video a like, please? A like for the progress of my Brassocatlia Gyrat Kiku, a like for the video, a like for the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, it would be amazing to have your vote of confidence and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. See, I even had two pots prepared, but Every time we do something, double check and see if we're correct with our assessment and if not, change of plans. So we are only addressing Gyrat Kiku today. Normally I also say soak with Kalmag and seaweed to prepare the root system to reduce the shock. Let it grow out of a possible stressful situation which a repot is faster with these beautiful properties that are Kalmag and seaweed. However, I am assuming I have mainly dead roots in this pot and for that reason, I only soaked with plain RO water. Now, because that root tip is uber duper precious to me, I'm gonna start picking away at the lecker, get rid of it, so that when I remove the tie, I'm not jiggling anything around that root tip that can be avoided, just on the assumption that there's nothing else in the pot to work with. Now, I am not anticipating any of the roots, if they are alive, in the pot to die on me just because they're going to go into lava rock because I am going to be able to keep it quite wet during the next six weeks. However, that is an assumption and until we don't get in, we won't know. So everything that I can see and identify is going to be protected from any abrasions. As you can see, it's a new root. It is not absorbing much water at all. If any, Brassavola roots, when they're new, the first year, they won't absorb. Unless, of course, you get them into the media very, very quickly and keep the media super wet, and that'll adapt them faster as well. But for the most part, Brassavola roots, first year, mm -mm. if this orchid were to be mounted, whoa, broken pot, so also good timing. So if this orchid were to be mounted and the new root system were growing, they would have the Teflon effect for an entire year. And as assumed, let me get my support because yes, we want that. As assumed, we've got nothing, nothing. So just as well, we went with the conservative approach of don't waste resources, don't waste product. One viable root, 
another one growing. That's great. Oh, if we turn the corner, ho ho ho, root tips. Awesome. So I'm not chopping any of the old roots away. This is not about cleanup. This is not about stressing the orchid. This is about getting her into a media that I can easier control in the winter time, which is lava rock. And my intention being, let the roots grow into the lava rock and I can keep that lava rock drier during the winter. Seeing as it does not have any wicking efficacy, if I am not going to keep the reservoir wet, then it's going to be able to dry out. Am I concerned about the velamen growing into a wet environment and then failing during the winter? Yes, to a degree. However, I think that it is much, much more feasible to save a root system when it comes to brassavolas by keeping them drier as opposed to the risk of having them wet and knowing you're going to lose them and you're going to start from scratch every single year. I'm using medium lava rock because I don't want any new roots to have to travel a long way to find their way into the pot. I could go with large lava rock, but in my dry climate, again, I'm trying to protect against roots frazzling out before they get down into the media. Medium lava rock will also give me the opportunity to take advantage of the water retention during the hottest months of the year. And if I used larger lava rock, it would increase my workload because I would need to do more flushing and more watering because large lava rock in a hot and dry climate like mine behaves much like bark. It'll take in the water and it will evaporate very, very quickly, possibly also leaving salts behind in these crevices because when a root system is that minimal then of course there is not going to be much fertilizer uptake at all however we do need to put some fertilizer into the pot to be able to support the orchid and what she's doing even though the measurements are so minute lava rock has a tendency to grab onto salts that aren't absorbed it's going to be a fine balance but it is something to be mindful of and then we can take it from there and hopefully get it right and we would like to avoid hair. <laughs> Why not? Let's get our orchid. I'm gonna secure her right now because that root tip is gonna have to be protected when I put the lava rock inside. We're gonna be using water, but I want to make sure that my orchid is somewhat secure because I'm gonna be putting like a little lava rock mound over that root tip. Meanwhile, the old lava rock was also dry, and with that, we've just made it nice and wet. I like the fact that the orchid is lower in the pot. That'll work in our favor come next year when it is nice and warm and toasty and dry. So that is intentional, trying to think ahead here. And we'll just make a little snug little area around that root tip. Protect it from anything that's gonna come down bashing on it. Maybe this lava rock is not heavy enough, so we have options. While I store my leka wet, because I don't want to have to wait for any kind of wicking efficacy to start, my lava rock gets stored dry in a covered container, because I want to see how long I can keep it dust free. <laughs> I prepare my lava rock just like I do my leka. I rinse out as much dust as I possibly can before putting it into RO water because that is the water with the lowest minerals parts per million that I have. It is the cleanest water and that's what I boil it in as well to sterilize it. And then I take whatever came out of the bag and I separate according to large lava rock, medium, small, and shards. <laughs> it's a very zen exercise, trust me. Because it is so nice and warm and toasty at the moment, I was very tempted to put a layer of ceramics between the two lava rock layers from the base of the pot to the top of the pot. Then I reminded myself the exercise here is to allow roots to dry out. Ceramis will draw moisture from the root system, as would lecca if I let the lecca dry during the winter. Not something that lava rock is going to do. So <laughs> I stopped with the ceramis. I was going to go back to, oh my goodness, and I wasn't going to think ahead long enough. Now, you can see I have a massive gap in there. I'm going to keep it that way. 
I have a lot of space before the root hits the lava rock. I'm going to keep it that way, allowing me to observe everything. And methinks that this is fabulous. It's going to work. And I'm so happy that finally I get to deal with this orchid. And then hopefully in 2026, we'll see some nice blooms again. My reservoir is there only as the humidity buffer. Lots of humidity around this orchid. Brassavolas do like a lot of humidity, something I have absolutely none of in my climate. So my reservoir will serve that purpose, even though she looks mucho scrunched up in that pot. It's okay, she is steady, and that's the most important thing. So I hope that you found some information I shared with you in this video today helpful. If you have any questions about my methods, why I tinker with lava rock sizes or leka sizes, if I didn't explain that appropriately and clearly enough at the beginning, let me know in the comments. I know it all sounds a little bit like, what is she talking about? I can clarify that in greater detail. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that you're here. Know that I appreciate that as much as I appreciate your time watching this video. Thank you so, so much. Oh, I'm going to link one more video in the description, and that is the one I did on the growth speed of my Dendrobium tetragonum we saw at the beginning of the video. If you want to see how quickly a new growth grows on this orchid, it is so much fun. I'll link that one in the description as well. And I hope you enjoy how I put that together. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.